Welcome back. I'm in a hotel room today because, well, I started a new job <laughs> and um, I have to relocate and that's going to be pretty tough with uh, the scarcity of any kind of housing anywhere in the United States. Now, in this particular case, I'm moving to Northern California uh, up towards the Sacramento area. Um, but enough of that. Let's get into what this video is really about. And that is the fact that um, this, this bubble's popping faster than I could have anticipated. I thought it would pop around probably after the midterms, let's call it late 2023. And so I've slowly prepared myself for this. Um, everybody asks, well, how do you prepare yourself? Well, I, I almost have zero credit card debt. Um, my cars are within a year of being paid off. Um, I, I'm going to almost be at a net, uh, a net zero debt outside of your basics. And that's where I made the mistake in 0809 was I didn't get myself to net zero. Okay. Now, a lot of people talk about going into debt to make money. Well, when, a, how, when a, a, an economy collapses, when you're going to watch a bubble burst, like when the, um, uh, the whole internet bubble burst or when 0809 occurred, which I talk a lot about on my TikTok, uh, the, the big thing about that is, is there's not any debt out there to borrow. Okay. So, at, and, and, and evidence of that, guys, are threefold. Number one, the Fed is not only raising interest rates, but they're pulling back the amount of money that they're giving to the banks to lend out. So they're making it more money more scarce right now because we just printed an insane amount of money to get through COVID, right? Now, whether you, I'm not here to debate that, but it is a fact that we printed trillions of dollars in a deflated our US dollar. We have to go through a major recession. We have to go through a major correction to get ourselves repositioned as an economy and as a country to innovate and get ourselves back on track to being the number one economy in the world. We also need to stop being the laughing stock of the world. So in reality, as much as you know, we're talking about Republicans versus Democrats, the Fed doesn't care what political party is in charge. They have to make sure that our economy is running properly since our US dollar isn't based on anything but thin air. And you heard that right. The US dollar is not backed by absolutely anything. Uh, Nixon took us off the gold standard that was a while back ago and ever since then it really is just a, a piece of paper that keeps us civilized what I want you to prepare for is understand that this is happening faster than predicted and the number the second thing uh, that I was gonna tell you that is a sign of that is you're starting to see banks and institutions recognize that it's coming which means they're going to tighten their lending guidelines uh, even further. And the third thing is, is real estate people are going, I'm talking about major real estate corporations. I'm talking about people that have bought into huge housing and stuff are starting to sell off their assets or looking to sell off their assets that they bought two years ago. So all those big corporations that are buying a bunch of rental properties, they're finding out their vacancy rate is increasing. So, for example, if you go look up in Google, you'll see that over 1.6 million homes in Florida lay empty. I'm not talking about apartment complexes. I'm talking about single family homes. People are abandoning their single family homes like they did in 08, 09, and 10 and going back to condos and apartments that are more affordable in the inner cities because right now to live in the suburbs in beautiful suburbia America dream is costing you a lot more money than it cost you at the beginning of the pandemic okay now at the end of the day you got to do what you got to do to survive okay um you know i started my own company i'm not i have not abandoned that but i know that my company will thrive more when the bubble pops than it's going to right now 
So that's why I went back to work. So a lot of people were wondering, well, why would you go back to work after four months? Well, I can tell the bubble's coming. The bubble was bursting faster than I could have predicted. So I decided it would be best to go back to work. Um, and then, you know, I can always build my company behind the scenes. And it won't interfere with my job and it won't interfere with the company I'm working for. So in, in, in all reality, you know, like this video, I haven't edited anything. I'm kind of just speaking from the gut. And, and by the way, if, if you do enjoy this content or anything I do make on TikTok or YouTube, uh, just hit the like button and subscribe. I, I'm going to try to post weekly now um, onto this channel. Uh, the last thing I want to really just talk to you about is don't go buy a new car. Whatever you do, don't borrow a big piece of loan right now. Don't go buy a house. Uh, don't go buy a new car or you, unless you absolutely have to buy a car. And if you're going to buy a car, go buy a clanker. Go buy a cheap thing that it doesn't matter what you spend on. It's just a piece of transportation to get you A to B. You're probably wondering why. Well, if you go buy a new truck right now, new trucks still have a scarcity of the market. And dealers are still trying to get five to 25 grand over MSRP or over the sticker price because there just isn't a very big supply. Well, with that being said, there's going to come a time where that bubble's going to burst. And when that bubble bursts, it's going to correct itself. So for those that did spend the 15 or 20 grand over sticker for their brand new Ford F-350 or Dodge 3500, hey man, I, I completely understood why you did it, but do not be surprised that you're stuck with that truck forever. Now, if you're one of those guys that holds onto their trucks for 20 years, hey, it didn't matter when you bought it. You're not going to sell it for anything close to what you paid for it anyway. But if you're one of those folks that are more like me where you you know, trade in your car after the warranty expires or right as the warranty expires so you don't buy an extended warranty, um, then, you know, you, you need to be careful. So, like, we were planning on trading in the Mitsubishi because I, I don't know if, if you guys follow me at all. I drive a 2018 Mitsubishi and a, my wife and I share a 2020 Santa Fe, Hyundai Santa Fe, and I was planning on training the Mitsubishi in and getting a, um, an electric car. Well, after doing all my research uh, and doing my homework, uh, I actually saved more money keeping the Mitsubishi. The Mitsubishi is six months away from being paid off. I get 41 miles to a gallon with it. Um, you know, even with gas prices here in California at six and six dollars and fifty cents a gallon for regular unleaded, um, I'm still about a hundred and forty dollars a head a month even with the electric uh, even and, that, and that's balancing what it's going to cost to actually recharge the electric car the payment the full coverage insurance so i'm 140 to 160 dollars a head a month keeping the mitsubishi so you know uh, uh, be careful don't go out and jump and buy anything unless you can pay it cash right now um, don't go out and put yourself in major debt. If you are going to go get a car, um, because you have to look into leasing. So that way you're not stuck with that vehicle, um, more than a three, two, three or four year lease. Um, and, and the other preparations you guys need to start making is thinking about, um, probably holding back some of your, uh, 401k holdings. Now, this was very unpopular on TikTok when I did this about two weeks ago. But one of the preparations that you're going to want to make is if you're, let's say, doing 5% of your gross income to your 401k, cut that in half. Um, and everybody goes, well, that's craziness. No, 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 it's not. Because let's say it's $400 a month. If you cut that in half to $200 a month, then that puts $200 extra in your pocket to feed your family. Okay. I'm not talking about bubble bursting and killing your 401k. It's going to kill your 401k, but it'll always rebound, okay? That's why I wouldn't panic and just shove it all out of there, but cut it down to where you have more money in your pocket for the next two years to get through the bubble, all right? 
And then lastly, I want to cover another question, another lastly, lastly, I want to cover a question I got on TikTok that I'll cover here in this longer YouTube video, and that is, um, how long do I think this recession will last? And, you know, our last great one that Obama got us out of um, was about four years. I watched, a, it was tough for the four years of the business I was in. Um, which I still am in. It was really, really tough, and we didn't see it climbing out of it until around end of 2012. So it was about a three and a half, four year gap, depending on which you, when you want to consider the recession of 08 to hit. I think this one will last about probably 30 months. I think it'll last less because we're not going to have a subprime lending problem. And banks are going to have fail safes right now to sell off inventory and modify mortgages. And that was unheard of years ago and was a new concept. So I believe that we're gonna get through a, a, a we're gonna get through it within 30 months. So uh, again, be careful. This is coming very quickly. This is nothing that is gonna be, you know, uh, do not make it a surprise when one day all of a sudden the housing market collapsed and popped and you went, oh my God, and I bought a home for 900 grand and it's only worth 400,000. I mean, that's an exaggeration, but just don't be shocked, okay? As usual, guys, stay safe. Enjoy the spring. April is turning out to be a wonderful month here in California as far as weather-wise. And, uh, you know, fishing season's coming up. So if you follow me on my other YouTube channels, you're in for some surprises. And um, I, I have also uh, come to the conclusion that when this channel reaches uh, 500 subscribers, I'm going to go ahead and reveal my other YouTube channel that has already been going for a while. Okay. Thank you very much. Enjoy.